so this morning we want to welcome you, especially we welcome all of our visitors who are online, our congregation who's watching from home. Uh, this morning's service uh, begins with a prelude, and it's uh, one to prepare our hearts to be in the presence of God as we consider his call on our life. So we begin with our opening worship in our prelude. This morning, we're going to finalize our, our sermon series on the mission statement of our church. And if you've been listening at all, you know that this isn't so much about the mission statement of the congregation, but it's about the posture of our hearts towards the Lord and how God would want to work through us together. And so we'll be looking at the gospel lesson. When you hear the gospel lesson read, pay particular attention to Jesus as he speaks into Peter's life and calls him uh, to repentance, to forgiveness, and then to service. Uh, so our focus is on uh, the part of the mission statement that says service and numbers. I invite you to rise for our opening prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, without you there is no mission, there is no purpose. Uh, there's uh, very little in this life to hold our attention. But you have come and you have brought peace and forgiveness, love and strength. And you invite us not only to relish it for ourselves, but to share it in lives of service to others. Open our hearts today, Lord, to hear your voice, to respond to your call, to live in the glory of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. We join in singing the opening hymn. Church, we pray, revive, 
has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. 
If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
We join in our common confession in the Christian Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Well, friends in Christ, we've been working our way through the church's mission statement, and today we're on the very last part of it, disciples growing in service and numbers. 
Now, a couple weeks ago on Columbus weekend, Gail and I were with the Appalachian Mountain Club up in Franconia Notch. We were taking a class on map and compass, which was a lot of fun. But one of the things that impressed us the most about this trip was the staff at AMC, the character and the quality of the people that we met who worked for the Appalachian Mountain Club. In the lodge, we get into the lodge, we've never been there before, it's our first time. We come in, there's kind of this front registration desk. Three people are working there. All three of them, enthusiastic, engaged in their jobs, happily, patiently answering questions they've been asked a hundred times already today. They made their customers feel noticed and significant. And then we got to our little classroom. It was a dozen Gen Xers and baby boomers being taught by children that could be my grandchildren, practically. <laughs> the teachers, the young man and the young woman, were patient. They were respectful. They were eager to help. They personalized their instructions for these slow-headed senior citizens that they were dealing with. So I began to ask myself, how deep does this team's level of competence go? I mean, I, the first stringers did a pretty good job, but what happens when you get to the bench? Are the bench players at AMC as excellent as the first string? We found out at lunch. We went early to lunch. There was only one person in the lunch room to serve us, but she was not put off by a dozen hungry people showing up early. She was happy to see us, eager to wait on us. She engaged with us. She was talkative. She brought out a lunch that was well prepared by the flunkies in the kitchen. It was hot and it was delicious. Stay with me. It's just not an advertisement for AMC. <laughs> These young men and women put their careers and their futures on hold so that they could live out the mission of AMC in the Franconia Notch. So I said, thinking about my sermon coming up, I said, wonder what the mission statement for the Appalachian Mountain Club is. Listen to this. Here's their mission statement. We envision a world where our natural resources are healthy, loved, and always protected and where the outdoors occupies a place of central importance, listen, central importance to every person's life. That's a pretty big mission statement, isn't it? Sounds to me like they want to change the world, doesn't it sound like that to you? These people aren't just putting time in, they weren't in it just for the money, they love their mission. They believe they're part of something greater than themselves. They were evangelizing Gail and me. That's what a mission statement does. It connects us to something greater than ourselves. So what if there was a mission? What if there was a mission for you? Something for you that called you to a need that was so great that it gripped your life, that it began in your youth, it grew in you as you matured. In your 30s and 40s, you bent your children towards it because it was that important to you. What if there was a mission so encompassing that you pursued it in your neighborhood, you lived it out at work, and you wanted to follow it to the very ends of your life? What if there was a mission so amazing to you that you would reorganize your priorities? You'd systematically set time aside to care for people. You'd want to help them discover the meaning of their life because in this mission you had found the meaning of your life. I've just described, you know what I've just described, don't you? What it means to follow Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay, we're going to do our Savior's mission statement one more time. Are you ready for this? Our Savior's mission statement goes like this. Say it with me if you know it. Disciples of Jesus Christ, growing in faith, love, service, and numbers. 
And this isn't a sermon about some congregation's mission. You know that by now, right? Churches don't have a mission. People do. It's a sermon about my mission. My mission in my life. And your mission in your life, if you make it that. And this morning we're going to see this mission through the eyes of Peter. Because he had flunked out of the mission. I don't know if you remember this, but Peter had flunked out of the mission. And he wasn't sure he had a place in it. And so we're going to take a look at Peter as Jesus calls him to service and numbers. So if we could have that slide, John 21, 15. Would you read this with me out loud? Just read it along. Uh, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. So here's what Christians do. They want to understand what every word in a scripture passage means. And so when you get to that first word, do do you love me more than these? The first thing we need to ask ourselves is what in the world are these? What's the antecedent? What's Jesus referring to here? And of course, nobody knows. And so uh, Christians over the centuries have developed three kind of answers to Do I love him more than these? Are you ready for the these, the three these? Theses? So some Christians, uh, remembering that Jesus has done, done this miraculous catch of fish, disciples are out fishing all night, they catch nothing. Did you know the disciples never, they were fishermen, right? They never caught a fish without Jesus in the whole Bible. You can read the Gospels. They don't catch a single fish unless Jesus does it for them. What was Jesus? He was a carpenter, right? He's a carpenter. So the fishermen need a carpenter to catch fish. So I don't know that these guys would have made a living, but that's what they did. So some people would say that Jesus is saying, do you love me more than this amazing catch of fish you just got? So essentially, Peter, do you love me more than a good life, a rich life, your bank account, your retirement amount, your social security income? Do you love me more than your nice car, your fancy camel, your cool donkey? I'm trying to make it go back and forth, right? That's what... That's what Some people would say, Jesus is saying, do you love me more than that pile of fish sitting there, which represents several months of your income, Peter? Now, some other people said, no, no, that's not what these refers to. I hope you're enjoying this part of the sermon. This is the Bible study. Some people say, Jesus is saying, do you love me more than you love these other disciples? You know, it's, the disciples were kind of like a frat house, right? They were hanging around for three years together with Jesus, right? They're, these guys got close. They got close to each other, and so there was this affection and camaraderie and competition and all the things that happen when you get 11 or 12 guys hanging out together for years, okay? And so some people think G- Jesus is saying, Peter, do you love me more than you love your friends? And so that's a question of love for relationships. The first idea is, do you love your money, your income, your prestige, your power, or do you love me? The second question is, do you love the people in your life, or do you love me, Jesus, first? So that's the second one. And then the third one is, uh, do you, the third more than these, the idea is, do you love me more than those guys love me? Okay, so the, fr- the second one was, do you love me more than you love those guys? The third idea is, do you love me more than those guys love me? Now, Peter knows better, right, by now. If you know Peter's story, he's always telling Jesus, I, you know, everyone else can leave you, Jesus. I'm not going to leave you, Jesus. But what had he done? He'd left Jesus, right? So uh, he knows better than that. He says, Lord, you know I love you. By the way, Jesus has done this for you and me. Uh, He is single-minded. He was single-minded for you. 
He did that for you. He placed your need above every other consideration in his life. He denied himself all three of those loves that we just described. Those three, whatever these is, he denied himself all of them. Consider how he denied himself the three loves. He denied himself material goods, right? You remember what he said? Birds of the air have nests, foxes have holes, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Do you realize even the one place he laid his head was a borrowed tomb? He didn't own it. Somebody loaned it. They didn't know they were loaning it. They thought it was permanent. But with Jesus, a tomb is always a loan, right? It, you know, he's not staying in there. Significant relationships. He suffered the loss of every significant relationship so that he could win you at the cross. Abandoned by his favorite friends and even by his Father in heaven. When he says, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's telling you, I have given up every relationship so that I could have you. That's what he does at the cross. He is single-minded for you. If you were the only person, you sitting where you are in your seat, if you were the only person broken by sin, if you were the only one who needed the atoning sacrifice of the cross, Jesus would have come just for you. That's what he tells us in the scripture. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. You see, he loves you with a single-mindedness, an unending passion, and this total patient commitment to you. Christians never really get over that. That's how you can tell a person is, is a Christian. They really are still surprised that Jesus loves them. You come up to a person and you say, to a Christian, you say, does, does Jesus love you? And, and the person says, I don't know why. I mean, I, it just overwhelms me. I, I don't understand how he can love me. I've not loved him in any respect the way he's loved me. And so a Christian will always be sort of stunned that God's Son would do this for them. And they're a little mesmerized at how far Jesus will go for the people that he loves. And they'll say something like, I never would have expected it. It's the one most wonderful thing that's ever happened. But I never would have expected that God would do this for me. My encouragement to you is don't ever get used to it. Don't ever take his commitment to you for granted. Don't let your heart become bored with his love. Instead, you need to bask in it. Be amazed every day. Reflect in it. Grow in understanding how it affects every corner of your life. His love for you makes all the difference in the world. And his love for you, the more you live in it, it's what makes you fully human. It makes you what God intended you to be. So in today's gospel lesson, as he does this thing with Peter where he kind of drags him through his betrayals and reminds him of how much he needs to love, he is showing you how much he loves Peter. Because Peter, as you know, had denied Jesus three times outside the high priest courthouse. He's warming himself at a charcoal fire. Peter's Courage, his courage to live for Jesus crumbles in the face of a servant girl who keeps saying, you're one of his followers, aren't you? Aren't you one of his followers? Your accent gives you away. You're from Nazareth. You're one of his followers, aren't you? And even though Jesus was under tremendous pressure at that moment in the courtyard, he looks over at, G at Peter after the third denial he looks at him. That's all he does. Anybody who's a mother of children knows about that look, right? That's that look. Mothers of children are uniquely gifted. And Peter comes to his senses, and the Bible tells us that he left Pontius Pilate's, or um, the high priest's courtyard. He left and he wept bitterly.
Three times he denies. Three times Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And three times in John 21, Peter says, yes. So let's look at the third time Jesus asked the question. John 21, verse 17. I'd like you to read it with me, would you? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. He's hurt again. But this time, the grief, the tears, this is a good hurt. This is a good hurt. You see, repentance does that. It calls for grief. But grief that's healing. When he left the high priest's courtyard in tears, those were tears of despair and bitterness. I've fallen. And there's no hope for me. But here with Jesus, boring in, the tears come again. And this is grief that heals and tears that cleanse. You see, Jesus is putting the question to Peter and to you and to me because he knows that as long as you and I hide our sin or make excuses or try to work it off, it cannot be forgiven. He brings the darkest parts of our life into the light, not to embarrass you or me, but because he wants to heal those and bring forgiveness to your heart. A lot of people, when Jesus questions, pin us down, they say, okay, I'm going to try harder, Lord. I'll do better, I promise. But Jesus isn't saying try harder. That's not what he's saying in this scripture lesson to you and me. You know what he says to Peter? Feed my lamb. Take care of my sheep. Feed my lambs. He's calling Peter back and telling him, you're still my disciple, growing in faith and love. Your sin has been brought to the surface in repentance. It's been washed away at my cross. And now I'm going to put you right back where you belong. You know where you belong, Peter? Here's the last words of his... Uh, Interchange with Peter. Follow me. That's what he says. That's where you belong, Peter, with me. I'm calling you to serve me and my mission. And now what happens when Peter and you and I begin to serve the Lord, we're really serving others. Have you ever actually served Jesus? Only in the ways that you love and care for each other. That's how you serve Jesus. That's how you do it. He always has people receiving your service. And the result is there's a growing of numbers. And you might say, okay, Tim, now where's the numbers in this gospel lesson today? Where's the numbers? Feed my lambs? That's not singular, it's plural. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep. This is way more than just bringing your family to Jesus. Do you think the people working at the AMC in Franconia Notch see their mission as getting dot, dad and mom out into the woods a little bit more often? They want every person to know the beauty of God's creation. That's Tim saying it his way. They want every person in the world subscribing to AMC's vision. In OSLC, I'm starting to learn how to say your letters. OSLC's mission statement, numbers is not the most inspirational or evocative word, but it's an incredibly important word. It captures what Jesus wants to do through you and me. Shortly after calling Peter to service, he called all of us to the same service. This is now Matthew 28. You know what he said, right? Go and make disciples of all. That's just about everybody, right? Baptizing, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. He wanted us to reach all nations. Those are numbers. And do you recall what he told you at the end of his great commission that he gave you in Matthew 28? Do you remember the promise? And it's the one I love and I hold on to. Do you remember it? Surely I will be with you always. Always he's with you. To the very end of the age. To the end of the age he's with you. 
He was with the first disciples when they ventured out growing in faith, love, service, and numbers. He was with you. He was with your parents and your grandparents as they brought you to worship as a little boy or girl, to VBS, to Sunday school. He was with your parents and your grandparents when they volunteered as a trustee or served in altar care, when they took a meal to a sick neighbor, when they visited a friend in the hospital. He was with his church as it served the world. And he's with you today. And he says to you what he said to Peter. Are you ready? Let's read it. Then Jesus said to him, If you follow Jesus, I'm going to tell you this. This is a promise, not from me. This is from the Lord. If you follow him, you will grow as a disciple. You will grow in faith and in love and in service and in numbers because you will have experienced his faith and his love and his service. And so we're here as a church to follow Jesus. Pray with me, would you? Lord, when I follow you, I stay on track. Uh, But when I follow all the other things that beckon me in this world, all the things that delight my eyes, that tempt my senses, boy, I can sure lose my way, Lord. Help us. Help us individually in this congregation to be renewed as disciples. Help us to grow in faith. Help us to see your love. Give us hearts that are willing to serve. And then, Lord, bring to us the people that you would have us serve, the numbers of people that you would bless with your peace, one at the cross, and fulfilled at Easter. Help each one of us, Lord, to follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. And may God's peace keep you in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're about to uh, receive the Lord's Supper. I want to address the folks that are watching online today. If you're online and you would love to receive the Lord's Supper, please call the church this week. Uh, The elders and uh, myself are uh, eager to bring you uh, the supper to your house. And so uh, we invite you to give a call to our Savior uh, so we can bring you the sacrament, those of you who are at home. 
I'm going to invite the rest of us to stand as we uh, receive the uh, gift of the, the Lord. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. I invite you to receive the body of Christ. same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is a new testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me receive the blood of Christ May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith till life everlasting. Go in God's peace. Amen. You may be seated. great to see everybody here and for all those of you who are joining us online we just thank you so much for taking your morning to spend with us uh, we did have a little bit of a change last minute on announcements so uh, mark had to leave early so we're gonna we're gonna wing this and see how it goes i've been told everything is on the slides um, surveys went out last week uh, they're gonna go back out again this week we had about 30 people respond now, based on the count today and what I've seen of people joining us online, we'd really like to get another 30 or so coming in so we get a good cross-section of everybody who has been either watching us online or attending in person. So if you just take a couple minutes, the first three questions, you can only check a box. So that's really quick. The last question is a short answer. Five minutes, you're done. So we really, we really do want your feedback. So if you just take that time and go through those surveys, that would be greatly appreciated. Kids Connection, today at 11, starting with the pre-K to second grade, uh, 11.30, fourth, third through fifth, and then the youth group will be here at the church starting at 5.30. Hopefully you'll be done before it gets dark. Uh, adult Discipleship, tonight at seven o'clock and I don't know, you should be able to use the same link that you've had for the last two weeks. I don't know if it got resent this week. Surviving the holidays. So there is grief share this today after church. Uh, Bill Gare and Lynn Cash are going to do that. I know we have one person who will be coming here uh, to attend that. It's not too late if you would like to join them. Uh, please let Bill know. Uh, I assume he's not straying too far after service, um, so you'll be able to catch up with him afterwards. And our mission moment today is for LWML, and I think we have a short video for that. Good morning, and a blessed Sunday morning to all worshiping from home. I'm Sharon Don, a member of Lutheran Women's Missionary League here at Our Savior. I want to give you an update on LWML and your Mission Might donations. Your donations of over $2,000 this past March helped to fund a $5,000 grant to Orphan Grain Train, a mission outreach group started by a Lutheran pastor in 1991. Their mission is to bring Christ's name and character to needy people near and far. Their local branch is located in Terryville, Connecticut. I just received a note from Orphan Grain Train telling me that they were able to ship over 5,000 pounds of food, 
four refrigerators, two freezers filled with food, 150 boxes of warm clothing and toys to Myra, Kentucky. The mission of Manna from Heaven is to seek to draw people closer to God by sharing their faith and hope in Christ and drive out poverty and hunger in their area, showing that with faith, anything is possible. That's one of the many mission grants funded by LWML. Over the next two years, LWML New England will be raising over $70,000 to fill grants like this in the United States and around the world. I want to close with a hymn from 729 and a Bible passage. The first verse of hymn 729. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only thee, trusting thee for full salvation, great and free. And from Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Thank you again for your continued support of LWML and have a blessed week. Return to the service. Okay, and uh, Pastor Tim is going to give us a, a quick update on the plans for Reformation Sunday next week. Well, we celebrate the birth of the Western Church on Reformation Sunday in many regards, the uh, recovery of justification uh, by faith through grace, by grace through faith. Uh, we'll also be celebrating uh, First Communion for our three eighth grade uh, confirmands and their families. So there will be the Lord's Supper for all people. We'll bring uh, the honored families forward first and uh, commune them, and then we'll all uh, be part of that as well. I also want to remind you that on All Saints Day, the following Sunday, we have a, a rite for the commemoration of the faithful departed. If you've lost a loved one who died in the faith in the last 12 months, there's a form in the back uh, near uh, the uh, church office. Fill it out. We'll be reading those names on that Sunday as we remember the ones that God gave us who are now with him and no more with us. We commend them to God's care. So if that's uh, something you'd like to do, there's a form in the back to fill out. Let's rise for prayer. We give praise to you, O Christ. You seek us, you call us to repent, you freely forgive us. Lord, we pray that you would teach us to cherish your love, to order all the other loves in our life in their proper place, so that you, our Savior and God, would always be first. Move us, Lord, to acts of service, first in our own hearts and lives, and then as a congregation, so that our lives, in the, our lives, your, the importance of your calling, your mission, your hold on us would grow. So that by your grace, your love, resulting in our service, would feed your lambs, take care of your sheep, would feed your sheep. Lord, this morning we serve others in our prayers. We ask you to hear us on behalf of the sick and the suffering and those in need of your healing touch. We pray for Audrey and Lee, for Holly and Bill, for Bob and Diane, for Don, Ellie, Betty, Frankie, Victor, Tammy, Jack, Emma, Stephen, Tyler, Margaret, and Kim. Give them patience in their time of suffering and uncertainty. Strengthen them according to your will. Bring them safely through the valley of the shadow that they walk through. Lord, we also lift up our missionaries, especially today we pray for Bethany Tennant, and we pray that you would restore her during her time at home. For our small group leaders, for servant leaders, for shepherd leaders, we thank you for faithful men and women who give of their time. For your church around the world and our church here at home, 
for our families and our own lives. We lift these cares to you as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.